Yo, what's up guys? Shendamon or Shendamon here. Today I'm here with a guide video on Berserker. Berserker's technique guide and build. And uh, this has been a very requested video from uh, all the stream watchers. And uh, now that the update is actually here for the Berserker rework, I can actually make this video. But before I get into the video, I do have a Twitch channel. So if you'd like to visit me when I play, I do play Berserker in other classes. Feel free to go there, give me a follow, say hi, and also consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. So before I get into all the juicy details, uh, there are a bunch of different builds that use different relic sets such as Domination, Entropy. For this video, I will be talking about the build that uses the Salvation set. So what is the playstyle of BT Zerker? This might not be an exact comparison, but essentially kind of plays like a transform class. Basically you use some skills to fill up the fury meter. Once it fills up, you press Z to activate burst mode. Like a transform class but not really you don't get a new skills you just become stronger think of it like uh taking steroids in burst mode you gain move speed and crit rate and damage if you take the class engraving which you are and most of your damage skills are big numbers this lasts around a minute depending on your spec stat uh which is more than your actual transform class so what's the stat distribution for this build this build uses the specialization stat unlike mayhem which uses crit and swift the stats I personally use are all spec accessories with a spec crit necklace and one swift ring. You might be asking, well, why not all spec accessories? Well, first off, the spec stat on a berserker increases your fury meter gain, burst duration, bloody rush damage, and awakening damage. It's honestly not too worth it to go full spec because while it does increase the damage from bloody rush and awakening, it doesn't exactly increase your overall damage. And having more spec, even though it increases the burst duration, your burst doesn't last long enough for you to get an extra combo off with or without the swift ring. So therefore, I choose to opt for a swift ring. That way I have smoother combos in the burst rotation and slightly lower cooldowns. And it's also cheaper than buying a swift ring. Now let's talk about the skills and tripods. There is some variation in terms of tripods of what I use and what other people use. So I'll just first talk about what I currently use and then talk about some different variations that you can use. So to begin with, I run Windblade at get level level 10. I go Quick Prep, Focus, and Windswift. Uh, level 5 Quick Prep and level 5 Focus. In Hellblade, I run 2-1-1 with level 5 in Melt and Earth Flip. You don't need, uh, you don't exactly need level 5 in Leap. It just increases the range, which is already pretty big. Uh, red Dust is uh, Damage Amp, Vital Point, and Red Wave. So 1-1-1 uh, one, one, one with level 5 in Vital Point. Finish Strike is Gravitational Blow, Weak Point Detection, and Light Cell. So 3-3-2 three, three, and all level 5 tripods. This is one of your main damage skills, so get it to 12. A Brave Slash is also at level 12. You go Quick Prep, Burst Enhancement, and Acrimony. I'm pretty sure I said that wrong, but uh, yeah, it's a 2-3-2. Two, three, two with uh, level 5 in Burst Enhancement and uh, Acrimony, yeah. <laughs> and Mountain Crash, I go Focus and Vital Point Hit with level 5 in both of them. Overdrive is 3-2-2 two, two with uh, five level 5 in all of them. And Tempest Slash is a 1-3-1 one, one with all level 5 tripods. This is what I currently use. Now, there are some variations, actually, with primarily Overdrive. I use Limit Break. Limit Break makes Overdrive a charged move, and it essentially deals way more damage than the other tripod, which is Ruthless. Ruthless shortens Overdrive and makes it into a combo attack. Uh, Limit Break adds uh, 12 seconds to the cooldown, so it's already 24 seconds, it would become 36 seconds. And with the swift stat and my gems, it's like less than 30 seconds. So actually, um, people are, I've seen different variations uh, between Limit Break and Ruthless. I go Limit Break because, well, it's just more fun. <laughs> but I'll, I'll go more into these two later. Uh, Tempest Slash is between Driving Hit and Storm Slash, the last two tripods. You can go uh, either one. Uh, Storm Slash is a bit longer animation, 
but I believe it does uh, roughly 12% more damage than driving hit and generates a little bit more meter. I think roughly around 10% more meter if you needed to enter burst. There is also enhanced strike and gravitational blow. Uh, I mean, I, d I don't really think you should take enhanced strike because you're really only fitting three extra skills with red dust gravitational bull does increase the animation time for finish strike but you're you can fit it in regardless and there is also a uh, damage amp on mountain crash because well depending on if you can fill up your burst meter so it's highly dependent on your spec stat and your tripods if you don't need the focus on mountain crash then you can go damage amp because really your only synergy is red dust which lasts about 16 seconds and you're not really going to be using red dust outside of burst usually because you'll want to save it for when you enter burst so some people actually take damage amp but if you need the focus tripod to enter burst you know faster then just go focus for engravings in a 3x5 setup we use grudge keen blunt raid captain and berserkers technique class engraving uh the fifth engraving can be either mass increase or crystal mass increase is slightly more damage uh, due to it offering more of an ap increase than crystal However, it does have the penalty of minus 10% attack speed. This shouldn't be an issue if you have a swift ring and also play with a yearning support. So it's basically negated. Uh, personally, I take Kerstall uh, because yeah, I, I like speed. In a 3 by 5 plus 1 setup, which is either a 9-7 with full relic or whenever in the future we get ancient, there isn't a whole uh, lot of level 1 engravings for you to pick between. So you can choose between Ether Predator level 1 or Crystal level 1. You can only go cursed all level 1 if you have mass increase level 3 in your 3 by 5. Now, I don't really think mass increase is worth taking at level 1 because the AP increase isn't really worth the attack speed penalty. So, I don't really recommend that. And finally, this is just only with ancient accessories and uh, at least a 9-7 stone. So a 3 by 5 plus 2 setup. Uh, the best level 2 engraving you can take is probably cursed all level 2. I don't really think any, I don't, I don't really think mass increase level 2 is that worth it either. The 9-7 stone efficiency isn't that great on a berserker. Uh, I mean, if you happen to have a 9-7, which the 7 points is cursed all, then cursed all level 2 is an excellent choice. For gems, this class uses 6 damage gems and 5 cooldown. You use a damage cooldown on Hellblade, you use a damage cooldown on Overdrive, you use a damage cooldown on Bloody Rush, and you use a damage cooldown on Finish Strike. So that's your main damage skills. Uh, you use only damage on Tempest Slash and Brave Slash. And you use a cooldown on Red Dust, so it you know you can do your Red Gut Dust combo uh, a lot more often. In order of like what gems you should get first, I would prioritize your main damage skills, which are mainly Bloody Rush, Finish Strike, Overdrive, Hellblade. Uh, prioritize those for whatever gems you're getting. If you're trying to go higher than 7 and you're looking to get level 9s or 10s. And then consider getting uh, Brave Slash and Tempest Slash. They're kind of a lower priority, but they're still good to take. Or skill runes. This really depends on your spec and what your current circumstances are. So my spec is 1532 and I have all tripods at a uh, focus uh, level 5. I have uh, all the wealth runes in the game currently from the time I make this video. Currently I use three wealth runes. I use my highest in Windblade and I use a purple in Brave Slash and I use another purple in Tempest Slash. This is enough for me to fill up the Fury Meter in 5 skills. Depending on your circumstances, you might need to opt for a 4th Wealth Rune. And if you do need one, then I'd recommend putting one in Mountain Crash. And if that doesn't cover it, then you can also opt to put uh, a Wealth Rune in Overdrive. I think if you decide to put a Wealth Rune in Overdrive, it should get your highest Wealth Rune. Because this skill generates quite a bit of meter. So otherwise, Windblade gets the highest wealth. And if you don't need the wealth on it, I like to put a Gale Wind on it. Preferably my highest one. Otherwise, if you don't need Mouth and Crash, so for example, I have three belts. I like to just put either a Purify or a Bleed Rune on Mountain Crash, depending on the raid I'm doing. 
uh highest gale wind goes to overdrive and then the second highest goes to finish strike and uh, hellblade and yeah so what is the skill rotation of this class first let's start with when you aren't in burst you want to start with windblade into tempest slash then use mountain crash followed by overdrive and brave slash uh i prefer to do it that way because mountain crash does give you a crit buff and so i like to just min max the damage on overdrive and brave slash so you just get like a bonus crit to it uh now depending on the raid you don't exactly have to do that like uh honestly if you're not confident that you can land overdrive then feel free to just use it whenever and and like just as long as you hit it and in my circumstances i fill the meter in five skills and then i can activate burst feel free to use brave slash and overdrive when you aren't in burst this is because both of those tripods have a tripod called burst enhancement what this does is it increases damage while you're in burst and upon entering burst it resets cooldown therefore you can just use them as meter gain skills now in burst mode skill rotation in burst mode all your combos usually start with red dust uh, then you throw in three skills into the red dust window before it expires so which skills do you throw in well after red dust you want to use one of your big damage skills which are bloody rush overdrive or hellblade then you usually follow it up with finish strike and finally one of your sub dps skills like either brave slash or tempest slash so which skills should you prioritize if you have all your skills off cooldown for red dust combo uh, after red dust bloody rush is up i'll always red dust into bloody rush because it has the highest damage uh, overdrive is a pretty good second and hellblade is a third this is assuming all those skills are up uh, so for example one combo would be red dust bloody rush finish strike brave slash another combo could be red dust overdrive finish strike tempest slash so basically the second skill after red dust should be always one of your main damage and the last skill should be one of your sub dam or sub dps damage skills and the third one should usually be finish strike there is one combo that lets you fit two main damage skills and that is Red Dust, Overdrive, Bloody Rush, and Finish Strike. And if you want to incorporate your Awakening skill into a combo, you can do Red Dust, Awakening, Finish Strike, and either Brave or Tempest Slash. Now, let's just say you did a Red Dust uh, combo. So you, you just use Red Dust and three skills, and now those three skills are on cooldown. Uh, you can usually follow it up with Mountain Crash, which gives you a crit buff you can fit in another damage skill followed by another sub dps skill for example let's say i did red dust bloody rush finish strike and tempest slash i can do mountain crash overdrive into brave slash right after and it would fit basically you use mountain crash as like a, a kind of like a red dust buffer but like red dust is obviously going to be stronger because it does give you attack power just keep in mind that both of your buffing skills which are red dust and mountain crash both of them don't have any sort of armor if you just happen to throw out red dust or mountain crash and the boss just happens to breathe on you and you get staggered well now you gotta wait for the cooldown now i i just talked about this during the skills but let's go back and talk about uh limit break and ruthless that's really what most of the variation is from let's first talk about the ruthless tripod so ruthless is instant it does lower damage than limit break because it just comes out instantly however you get to use it more often because red dust and overdrive are the same cooldown you'll always have overdrive up for your red dust combo and therefore you'll have a consistent damage source always with red dust therefore you can always red dust overdrive finish track but uh you know where's the fun in taking limit break limit break is the uh the home run bat charge version which is you know uh the one probably everyone prefers because it just looks more fun to use this one increases the cooldown to 36 seconds so after you use it in a red dust combo it won't be up for the next red dust combo so sometimes you'll need to fit it into the mountain crash cycle after your red dust combo and yeah sometimes uh if you're doing your combos too well there can be times where i uh i have red dust up but i don't have any skills up so uh that's just something to consider just try it out at trixian see what you think see if you prefer how it lines up 
try the combos out and then just pick whichever tripod you prefer personally i think they're both fine but uh i think it's more of your preference really and i think that's about it for this guide this is meant to help people get started i probably missed a few variations but this should be good enough uh there are some other variations which i've seen on loa uh and also inven but uh i think i'll save those for a future video if something comes up and i'll probably do my own testing too and see how it feels but anyways uh this is what i'm currently rocking uh if you enjoyed be sure to like and subscribe and also check out my twitch channel and uh i'll see you on the next one peace